Welcome to the TDWG Podcast. My name is Paul Davidson. And my name is Scott Norman. And today, we have a guest. We have been attempting to get on this podcast since its inception several years ago. It's been three years since we've, uh, we've been trying to get him on. Uh, yes. Our first uh, NCAA, double, or NCAA tournament uh, episode, we tried to get him on. and It just didn't work out, but we finally pulled it off. And his son will be very disappointed that it took this long for us yeah. to finally get him on he the show. He tried for two years. <laughs> and of course, that special guest is none other than Jason Irby. Welcome to the, the podcast. Beep. Thank yeah, you the very beep. much. Appreciate you guys having me on. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we are, we are excited. We've got all kinds of things we want to know. And of course, we opened it up to students to ask their questions. So that'll be the last thing we get to here. But uh, first, we always have to ask the basics. So... Yeah. Well, uh, why did you become a teacher? Kind of an interesting story. I actually went to college initially to be a lawyer. Um, really? Got, got I didn't in, know that. Got into political science and uh, a lot of reading, all that kind of stuff, laws, really dry material. And I started to realize that I didn't think I wanted to do that for the rest of my life. I, I came from kind of a poor family, good family, but kind of poor. So the lawyer thing appealed to me because of the, the monetary mm-hmm. uh, part side of it. But once I realized how dry the material was, I thought this is not going to be something I, I want to do for the rest of my life. And I was also realizing I wanted to stay around athletics and I really like working with kids. I began volunteering like, as a Pee Wee coach where I was going to school. So anyways, I, I changed my major to education and got into teaching. It's kind of interesting too how I ended up in East Prairie, Missouri because I'm from Charleston, Illinois. Um, like where exactly is Charleston, Illinois? Because my wife is originally from Illinois, but I, I have a vague idea of where certain places are, but I don't know where Charleston is. Charleston is about 45 minutes south of Champaign, which is where okay. the University of Illinois is located. It's pretty close to the Indiana border. We're about 30 minutes from Indiana, Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, so, but anyways, I, uh, I was a student taught under a really legendary coach in Illinois, and he actually has started his career uh, in Missouri. And he actually knew the superintendent of East Prairie, and we, I noticed on the website they had a job opening. So anyways, he made a call, was able to get an interview, and uh, they hired myself and my wife both, so it worked out great. And really love it down here in southeast Missouri, and Portage is even better than East Prairie. So. <laughs> Wait, okay, it's on the record now. Yeah, there we go. It's on the record. Sorry, not to offend anybody, but this is a great school. So anyways, that's kind of how I got into it. So I am curious, how far into college were you when you made that switch? I was two years in. At the end of my second year, I realized this is not what I want to do. So That's where you often do see yeah, the, the switch occur. We, we've uh, had students even who have noticed that. So I, I also was two years in and, and went from video and radio production to switch to education. Right. And so it's, it's that interesting point where it's like, you know, I'm about to get into all the core stuff. Yeah. This isn't the core I want to do. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. So you, social studies, how did you end up, because I know when I first met you here, you were doing PE. Mm-hmm. Did you graduate PE or did you graduate social studies? I graduated PE, but what I, as I got towards the end of my degree, my advisor let me know since I had taken so many political science and history courses as a pre-law student, mm-hmm. I only needed like one more class to become certified for social studies. So I went ahead and took it uh, the last summer I was finishing up school to go ahead and get my certification to make myself more marketable to try to find a job. So so we have three people that can technically, legally teach uh, social studies Absolutely. inside this room. Uh, so uh, we've, you've talked about getting your the job at East Prairie. So uh, kind of walk us through, like, what are all the different things that you've taught since you started teaching at East Prairie and, on, on a, of course, moving into here? Okay, so at East Prairie I taught middle school and high school PE. I also taught middle school and high school health there. Um, and I used to have to cover ISS two or three hours a day for a couple of the years I was there. So that basically covers that. When I first came to Portageville, ironically enough, science was my least favorite subject in school, but I ended up having to teach seventh grade science uh, for the first two years I was here for about half the day, and the other half the day I had some elementary PE, some middle school PE. Because memory served me correct, like whenever you got hired on here, like I was still doing the radio with Porter, with, with the basketball and whatnot, and I knew that you weren't uh, exclusively a PE coach. You were doing kind of other things outside of the realm of PE. Right, yeah, that science, it was, a, I mean, it's seventh grade science, let's be honest. It's not... Um, you know, rocket science, but it is. Hey, 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 Miss Ivy is yes, right yes. outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
it was something I kind of just taught myself as I went along, and I think I think I did a pretty good job with the kids. I enjoy. I actually ended up enjoying it, um, but I was also glad to get moved back into a full time PE health body conditioning. So level. I'm just curious here. Give give me a window into a Jason Irby science class. Are we doing lots of notes? Are you doing lots of like you blowing stuff up? Like what kind of take did you do on science? We honestly, early on when I first started that first year, we did a lot of notes because I was not real comfortable with myself as a science teacher. So I felt like the easiest thing was to give them the information. Mm -hmm. And so we did, I did a lot of lecture. I also try to at least do what's called jigsawing, put them in groups and let them kind of self teach and we get back together. Um, and then the second year I did it, I was much more comfortable, so I, we started doing more experiments and things of that nature, which was more fun for the kids. That first year I was just trying to survive as my, for myself as a science teacher, to be uh -huh. honest. So if memory serves me correct, Coach Wallace taught science for a little while. Did you kind of take over what Coach Wallace was doing? I actually came after Eric Ellerbrook. Okay, that's it. So Eric Ellerbrook was before me, and Eric – was, ended up being a pretty good friend of mine. He left after uh, my second year here, but he, he gave me some insight on some things he did in class too, so that was helpful. But, yeah, but I think he's now the uh, principal at Dyersburg. Correct, yes he is, he is. Speaking about becoming principals. Yeah, uh, that's a <laughs> great question. There is the transition for you. How did you end up transitioning from teaching then into administration? So I was kind of stupid for a long time. Um, People were getting their masters around my age. I had a couple different chances when I was a younger teacher to get in cohorts through William Woods, and I passed on it with always using the excuse that I was so busy with basketball. And then I got to a point where I realized it would be nice to make the extra money, and so I decided to get a cohort together here, and luckily there were seven other people here dumb enough to get in it with me, um, <laughs> and we were able to have a cohort here at Portageville, and those people – Honestly, as I told them before, the reason I'm able to be in this position now because without them, we, I wouldn't have been able to get that cohort. And it was I had to have one here with basketball. So I got into it late with my admin degree. But uh, anyways, uh, and then last spring, this opportunity opened up with the assistant principal's job. Um, I'm getting closer to retirement. So this was an opportunity to bump retirement. And honestly, uh, the pay raise was too good to pass up. And uh, I really had a good group of seniors last year. I, we, we always have good kids here as far as basketball and great just people. But I felt like it was kind of a good time to go out with that particular group of kids and uh, transition into administration. So it's been a, it's been a um, great career so far. I loved coaching. Um, I'm sure I always will love that, that, that part of education. But this is a new challenge. And it's it's been a lot of fun so far, to be honest. So I remember when you started the cohort, it was it was exactly one year. I was already one year into my master's, and I believe you were yes, a, a I was semester a year into, into mine, yours. Yeah. Yes. And so you asked both of us, and we were like, we were, we're already halfway there. Right? Yeah, we're already well into the master's. Um, otherwise, would have probably jumped on board. But I do remember whenever y'all were going through your cohort, you were kind of like the team leader of everybody that was in there. Yeah. You would be walking through the hallway being like, hey, did you get that forum post done? Yeah. Hey, how's that project <laughs> coming? You were, you were on top. Like, even though you said they helped you out, I feel like you were really the, the, the ox in pulling the cart and everybody <laughs> kind of making sure everybody was kind of in line. I mean, he also hired some excellent actors for some of the things that he did uh, in the <laughs> in the project arena. There, uh, his son's his son's favorite high school memory, I'm sure, involves yes. involves one of the projects he did there. Um, so I do have a question that's kind of related to the teaching. We kind of hopped over the coaching side there as we looked at the, the teaching background. How did you go from getting that first job to being the legendary Coach Irby head coach here at Portageville High School? Well, I don't know about the legendary part, but when I first, again, back to the gentleman I a student taught under, he encouraged me that the, he felt like the best way to learn as a coach was just to jump right in and be a head coach if you could and learn on the job. So that's what I was afforded the opportunity to do at East Prairie. I was head coach when I first went there. I had to coach junior high and high school, so I was a busy guy. Um, and we had some rough years the first couple years, um, and then we started trying to try to build the program and kind of turn the corner. By the last couple of years I was there, we were able to win conference titles, which was a pretty big deal for East Prairie because as you so know, that's Mississippi Scott, isn't it? The Mississippi yeah. Scott County, which that's pretty yeah, that's impressive. Pretty, yeah, yeah, that's a solid area. <laughs> yes, because at that time Scott County was still a really it was a powerhouse, and Kelly had a good program. There, was, there were some good programs in there, but we were we had some good talent come through finally and. Uh, anyways, and then through this process, one year we played Portageville, 
early in my career when Porchville was state ranked and um, we played them at East Prairie and we ran a delay game offense and really had, had them flustered. Uh, we had, were tied with them at halftime and I can remember Coach Bywell I remember this. calling two or three timeouts during the first half and just berating his players for, you can't guard those guys, they're not any good. But we kind of perplexed them a little bit with the stuff we were running. Anyways, second half they come out, Order was restored. They pressed us. They killed us. We, they did what they were supposed to do. But the very next day, Coach Bible called me at school and said, man, we need to sit down and talk and have dinner. I'd like to learn that offense. I think that could be helpful. So we began to develop a friendship at that point and um, got to know him pretty well that way. And then when this opportunity to be an assistant coach here came up, it was really a no-brainer to get into a really good program, work with a great guy, a guy I respected, and try to see what a championship program was really all about. So, What year was that? When I first came, yeah. 2007. 2007. I was a, I was a senior in high school, or I was not a senior in high school. I was a college freshman that came back to a, a game, and I went with some friends to that game. And I remember sitting up in the dog pound, watching the nightmare unfold before us, and being like, <laughs> "How is East Prairie even hanging in with us?" Yes, yes. That's that is that's cool. That's one of the things that I, you know, as somebody who didn't grow up around here, I don't get those kind of backwards insights into <laughs> the history. Uh, but that is that is very interesting to hear. Let's say you did bring up something very interesting. You did have to replace a legend, even though he does not like being referred to that. Right. He has obtained that his, status. His name is on the floor. His I mean, name is point. on the floor. And so what was like having to take over for Coach Bidewell? It was difficult. Uh, I mean, Coach Bidewell did everything he could to make the transition smooth. He helped me a lot behind the scenes. He tried to stay. He didn't go to games hardly at all, hardly at all that first year. He didn't want people, you know, referring to him or talking about him while I was coaching. But it was hard just in the sense I put a lot of pressure on myself because of what he had built, and I didn't want to be the guy that let the community down, let the school down, let the program fall off. So I put a lot of pressure on myself. And it was hard at first to get some buy-in from kids because they were so used to Coach Bywell, and he obviously had the cachet of having won five state titles and all the district championships. So it took a while, but uh, as the years went on, it got better, and the kids kind of became more my kids. They hadn't been coached by him, and uh, it became easier as time went on. But it was a struggle at first, again, mostly because of self-imposed pressure I put on myself. But uh, at the same time, who wouldn't have wanted this job because I was taking over a situation that was really good. The kids understood discipline and hard work and, and wanted to succeed. So there was a lot of good things about it as well. And so like, not a lot of people are aware of this, but like Porter Jewel is in the top 10 of teams in the entire state, schools in the entire state of Missouri in basketball state championships. I didn't know that. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, actually the majority of state uh, basketball championships are won around here. Yeah, out of this area. So I, I do have a question that's, you know, we didn't have on our on our plan here, but I'm just curious because, you know, you, you made the comment, eventually the kids became your kids. And that's actually literally true as well. Right. So having seen, I you know, I got to see as Drew is going through here and now is playing in college, um, what is that like as, as a father then also coaching your son in basketball through very successful years what is that dynamic like? Let's add the other, the on top of that wrinkle of they still lived in East Prairie and had to drive to Portageville yes. and back to East Prairie. So like, are you, you know, are you talking shop about basketball with him outside of this, or did you like just kind of leave it at practice? How'd that all happen? So we talked. There was a lot of times in the car on the way home from ball games or practices, usually ball games though, where we would talk about it. Sometimes it was pretty one-sided, me venting. <laughs> Those were some hard car rides for Drew. Looking back, I wish I had kind of handled handle some of that differently. Uh, but when we got to the house, we generally dropped it and had supper and moved on. But it was hard on some of those car rides. It was hard in practice, too, because I wanted to make sure the other kids realized he wasn't getting preferential treatment. That, so I was extra hard on him. Uh, and I think all the kids that were playing at that time would tell you the same thing. Um, so it, through the grapevine, that seemed to be kind of the word that uh, we picked up on was that Drew wasn't getting any easy bounces. <laughs> right. So it was it was difficult. It created some, you know, my, sometimes my wife wasn't too happy. Why are you so extra hard on him? And just again, it was some, it was there were some difficult aspects to it, but I'll, I wouldn't trade it for the world because it was a great chance for us to spend a lot of quality time together doing something we both loved. So there was a lot of good parts to it too, and. Now, in hindsight, it's easy to look back and look at some of the, the positives. At the time, sometimes, again, you get caught up in the moment. And, um, it, there were some hard nights, but overall, it was, a, it was a great joy to be able to coach him. 
So in, on a on a game, so you know, I know that you, your focus there is kind of on like, okay, well, when I'm venting or whatever. What about and now I, I'm blanking on the team that we played, but I traveled and, and we watched and it, where Drew hit the game winning shot like that was as, Thayer at Sykeston. Thay, okay, so I remember watching that happen and these two huge guys are guarding him and he somehow gets the shot in as time expires and then just does the the straight face just he's getting tackled by the team. <laughs> so then like on a night like that, how's that car? Are you just like hyped? Are you both just going off each other about that moment? Are you replaying the whole thing? How does that play yeah, out for the Irby home? Yeah, we were definitely replaying. That was a great moment. We were both on cloud nine. Uh, it was it was a phenomenal time. To, uh, you know, for him to hit that shot was huge, obviously, for our team. But if you look at the game, he, he was a starter for us, but he – he hadn't scored the whole game, so he was probably the least likely guy to have hit that shot. And as you said, there was a couple six five kids from Thayer contesting it, so it was probably a pretty lucky shot. But uh, at the same time, it's a, it's a moment we'll never forget. We'll always share so much so. Sometimes my daughter Taryn will be mad. We'll be, my wife and I will watch. We'll watch the replay of it and still at the house sometime every once in a while. She, do we really have to watch this again? We know what's going to happen. Or whatever. So, but anyways, it was a great moment for us. We enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun. Oh, uh, that is that is. Uh, yeah, I've already uh, messed around with her. Mm-hmm. You know, this year because she's already seen. She's like, yes, I'm Drew's sister. You know, like, yes, I I know. You all know who he is. <laughs> you know. Um, oh, no, you know this is what happens if you <laughs> when you record in a school. Um, but. Uh, yeah, we're going to move on to Sagushin's now. That was, was the Sagushin's bell. It, that it, wasn't the school bell, Norman. I'm sorry, That my was bad. the Sagushin's bell. Oh that was on purpose. I was about to ask permission from my fellow host to move on because we've got some... No, the bell gave you permission. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's the um, opposite of the classroom. So the we, bell uh, tells you when to go, not the we, teacher. We're going to take turns pulling out of here. So these are these are from the students. At, right. And, uh, you know, we've gone through. There's nothing inappropriate in here or anything. But there's, you know, all kinds of random stuff. Uh, and uh, we'll just see what you have to say about these student questions. So I'm going to start with this one here. Um, okay, this one I had to have. Uh, here, I will read this yeah, one. you, you read grab that one. one. So the, this one is, what strange things y'all seen in your life? You've seen in your life. So what are some strange things that you've seen in your life? <laughs> mm. Well, a strange thing I was a part of, unfortunately. I was... Uh, trying to get to a school one morning to Portersville. I was running a little late and I drove through some water over the road and ended up sinking my car. Watching it go underneath the water was kind of an interesting experience and a little bit scary to be honest, but that's something off the top of my head I can think of. I haven't I don't think I've seen a lot of strange things though, honestly. So I think I've heard about that event, but not from you. Yeah. I was talking to somebody about how to get to school and they mentioned, well you can go this back way kind of by the levee, but be careful because one time Irby almost Sank. Right. Yes, I did. My car sank. I did sink, and I had actually had a hard time getting out of the car. But fortunately, I think by an act of God, I really feel like it was a God thing. I was able to get out of there and uh, not drown. You know, it was scary. It's why they always say, you know, turn around, don't go through water or whatever. So I should have listened, but I didn't. So that was a strange thing I was a part of. Was that during like the 2011? Floods, or was that a separate time? It was the 2011, yeah, 2012 school year. Actually, it was on. I remember it was on St. Patrick's Day. So okay, <laughs> you did not have the look of yeah, the Irish. No. We're, you just weren't wearing them green, no. you know. Man. As a Celtics fan, that yeah. was like it was a cardinal <laughs> sin. Yeah. Uh, and we do have some questions related to your Celtics fandom in here because the okay. kids are aware. Um, uh, this one actually is an interesting question. Do you ever plan to go back to coaching? I thought about it a lot already because I, I, I already miss it. There's a lot of things I miss about it. I miss some of the summer stuff we do and just being around those kids. So there's a chance that maybe after a few years of administration when I've really helped my retirement out that if the right opportunity came along somewhere that I, I would think about getting back into coaching because I, I, do, I do love that part of education. So there's definitely a chance. But uh, I, as far as here, I doubt it because I think TJ is going to do it. TJ Smith's going to do a great job and hopefully he'll be here for years and years. Uh, but maybe if somewhere along the line uh, the opportunity presented itself, I would definitely consider it. Would you ever consider, just curious about this, like college coaching for I would. basketball? I would. It's, I don't think right now because my daughter being in school here, it's mm-hmm. a great time. But maybe when she got out of school and we didn't have kids in, in school anymore, that if the right opportunity came along, for sure, I'd be, I'd be interested in that, definitely. All right. The next question is, is LaMelo better than Jason Tatum? 
No way. Whoever <laughs> asked that question does not know enough about basketball. <laughs> Clearly, Jason Tatum is the better player. Um, it it may or may not have been one of the basketball players, but I can't say names <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, this is actually interesting in the context of a conversation we had earlier, just talking about things going on in school and student struggles. What is your opinion of social media? I have a pretty negative opinion of it, to be honest. I don't do any social media. I do think there are probably some good parts about it. Uh, I feel like it's uh, created a form for people to be kind of cowardly in our society, say things on social media they would never say to your face. Um, there are some, like I said, I'm sure there's good aspects of it, the ability to share share information with people across the world. I don't know. I don't take part in it. I kinda, so I generally have a negative opinion of it, yeah. I'm you, can, you guys can probably tell me different. I'm sure there's a lot of great things. No, I, I, view, I view it as candy. Like, the, you, candy's tasty and fun, but you can have too much candy. Yeah, yeah no, I, I have seen as, as the diets, as far as just intake in general from our students, and we had this, you know, I mentioned this earlier, as the intake of our students moved from meat and vegetables and candy to just candy, there are some effects mm-hmm. on the way that they interact with each other and all this. But we actually, I think we've had like a whole Oh, podcast. we've had a lot. Uh, just yeah. go go re-listen to the Fahrenheit 451. Just go read Fahrenheit 451. That's yeah. all you really need to know. If you want to see where our society is heading, read Fahrenheit 451. Also, Brave New World, maybe, but I recommend Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, we, we both believe that that is a very <laughs> accurate portrayal of where the general direction we're headed. Another interesting point on that that I heard at a coaching clinic a few years ago, one of the college coaches was talking about how we live in an HD world and so everybody immediately thought he was talking about high definition, but he said, no, a head down world, which is not just social media, but he said, you just see everybody, you know, adults, kids, head down on cell phones, Mm -hmm. and the social skills are just not there. So as a coach, you have a hard time getting your kids to communicate on the court because they're not used to communicating. If they had their cell phones on the court, (laughs) Mm -hmm. they would be be great communicators, but that was a challenge as a coach. But I I always thought that was a good analogy that we live in the HD world. Yeah, you definitely see that, like, Anywhere that you're traveling, anything at all, I, I've you know been able to watch that transition as somebody who grew up traveling a lot. That you used to, if you were on a train or on a plane or whatever, everything was communication with the people around you, and now no one talks to each other in those public settings anymore. You just you make awkward eye contact for a second and then quickly look back at your phone. So yeah, mm-hmm. we've seen that play out. Um, is it yours? You say it's my yeah. turn. Who do you think is better, Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady? I gotta go with Tom Brady. I'm not. I'm a Bears fan, uh, so I've never seen a good quarterback. You're just sucking up to the head boss. <laughs> yeah, that's that. he's uh, he's trying to get get on good terms here. This is. I mean, clearly Mahomes is better. I mean, you know, not not in in, in total repertoire, obviously. Okay, I think, yeah. If you I think want to raw say right skills. now, right now, Patrick Mahomes, I feel like is better overall. He's got a ways to go to catch Tom Brady in the in my yeah. opinion. All time, absolutely raw skill set. Yes, dude's crazy. He's. Brett Favre, mm-hmm. but more athletic. With less interceptions. Yeah. <laughs> and less welfare. <laughs> oh, uh, yep. uh, none of the kids will get that reference. Just look it up. Um, so uh, I'm curious if you even know what this is talking about. Okay. Thoughts on Dream's face reveal. I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm the only That's one a, here who I, actually even knows. I have a vague idea, but I don't even know. So there is a there is a Minecrafter. Uh, this, this actually really would go back to our whole conversation about social media. There was a, a, a uh, creator, I guess, who, who put out Minecraft videos for probably three or four years now and became consistently one of the most viewed creators on YouTube. Like every video he'd post would get 30 to 50 million views wow. pretty quickly. And uh, he never showed his face. He like in no video could you ever see who he was. He never did collaboration videos where you could see him standing there. He didn't like none of the people he worked with even knew what he looked like because he just did it through the internet. And then he finally revealed his face this past week and pretty much the entire internet just talked about how ugly he was. Well, that's sad. Wow. Yeah, and he, I mean, he's not even a bad-looking person. It's just he's clearly someone who's not used to being on camera. If you watch the face reveal, he like he's awkward as all get out. Um, but it's just one of those things about the negatives of social media right. of like, all these people that are like, oh, we love your videos, and then they see him, and all they're gonna do is, you know, rip on him. Right. And Where it's just like we immediately did a face reveal because we don't care how ugly <laughs> yeah, we are. We did a face reveal before we even did any content. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just one of those interesting social media mm-hmm. things. Yeah. 
All right, my next question is, Coach, tell us your favorite high school basketball sports moment. So let's. We, you know, I imagine the uh, Drew sectional game is probably top tier. Uh, do you have any other ones besides that? We're one? talking about as a coach now. I guess. I, I'm curious to hear both as, player and coach. Yeah, as a player and as a coach. So as a coach, I think obviously when I was fortunate enough to be Coach Bible's assistant, we were able to win the state championship in 08, 09. And as whenever you get into coaching, I think that's always part of your goal. You'd love to be part of a state championship team. So those that was just that was a great great memory. And then my 18, 19 team, not just. The fact that Drew hit that shot, that group was so coachable and did everything I asked him to do for us to be able to make a run to the quarterfinals because we kind of started the year a little rough. So that probably as a head coach was my best memory. Um, as a player, I would say a couple different things. Um, winning a regional championship my sophomore year, which was the first time my school had done it in about 15 years. And then on senior night, I had 39 points, got a dunk. Um, mm. So that was – that was wow. a, that was a really cool night. Everybody got a dunk. Got a really had a really cool moment on my senior night. So that that was fun. That's wow, yeah. And I've also played against Kevin Garnett in high school, which didn't go so whoa. well. Whoa, Wait, whoa. Oh, whoa. Okay, yeah, no. Whoa. Need more detail now. Whoa. So Kevin Garnett, he his senior year he transferred to Farragut Academy in Chicago. He had been he had prior to that gone to school in South Carolina. Uh, so he transferred in there. They had a really good team already. And we ran into them, and they were. We had a really good team my senior year, but we were not. Y'all didn't have a Kevin uh, uh, Kevin Garnett. Kevin on Garnett, it. and they also had another guy named Ronnie Fields. If you, you can Google him, like he was six six, he kind of compared to a lot like a high school version of Michael Jordan. Unfortunately for him, he ended up getting into a bad wreck the next year, which was his senior year, and broke his neck, and oh, never gosh. was never was quite the same player. But uh, they were loaded as a team. But that was a cool experience, especially when Kevin Garnett became a Celtic and I was a Celtic fan. It was kind of cool. Like, yeah, I played against that guy, you know. That is – that's not, six, awesome. not very well, but yeah. I played against him. Yeah. Say, for y'all, those of y'all who are unaware of who Kevin Garnett is, he was the high school phenom between Kobe and LeBron. He didn't necessarily get up to the same heights as Kobe and LeBron, but he still had a very successful career. And I'm just, you know, Irby. He might... made the Minnesota Timberwolves relevant right. all yeah. by himself. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was going to go the other route and say, you know, Irby might disagree with me here, but a lot of people get onto LeBron James for creating big threes, but uh, I mean, Garnett was actually the original big three seeker here. Yes, yes. And hey, he he, he paid his dues. He spent a long time in Minnesota. You know how cold it is in Minnesota? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Everyone seems to, you know, get big and then leave (laughs) to to join super teams from there. But anyway, uh, this, this is actually kind of related to that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is Larry Bird better than LeBron James? Okay, so over the years I've had this debate with a lot of my players. I could actually pull up an uh, interesting little chart for you, but if you look strictly at their prime years, Bird had so there's like ten categories that were compared. Bird beats LeBron in seven of those categories. Bird averages more rebounds for his career, more assists, uh, shoots a better percentage has more steals per game, more blocks per game. And some of those st- statistics are kind of amazing when you think about it because LeBron's just genetic freak, so athletic, but somehow Larry Bird, who couldn't jump two inches off the floor, averages more rebounds per game for his career, has more blocked shots. Um, I would always go with Larry Bird. I'm partial. I have a, Larry, a Celtic slash Larry Bird room in my house. Uh, went to a lot of Bird games when I was a kid in Illinois. we go to Pacers games. So I'm a, I'm a huge Larry Bird fanatic. I will grant you LeBron is – Obviously, way more athletic and had a longer career, but I think if you look at their prime years, there's an argument to be made for Larry Bird. An extension upon that, the suggestion I just pulled was who is better, MJ or Larry Bird? I would definitely go MJ. I would grew up around that era too. I think Michael Jordan. There's always this discussion now about Michael or LeBron as the goat. I I have to go with Michael Jordan. I know again he's closer to my era, but I just the guy never lost in the finals. But so you, the the kids just don't understand just how like. A much of a monster he became. Right. Like he, once, like the once, like the blood was in the water for like a serious championship. He was ahead of his time. I feel like with the things he was doing, and also, again, maybe some bias, but the NBA was a much stronger league than you had. He had to go through the Celtics and the Lakers. He had to go through the Detroit Pistons. There was a lot, Philadelphia 76ers when they were stacked with Dr. J and Moses Malone. The NBA had many more good teams than what exists now, but there's also been a lot of expansion since that era, so the league has gotten more watered down, in my opinion. But 
I sometime we'll have to have you on here just talk more specifically about basketball because I have all kinds of questions that we get sidetracked on that I'm curious to hear your opinion on the record about. Um, <clears throat> this one is kind of vaguely related to the NBA because it says, "Do y'all listen to rap music, aka NBA YoungBoy?" I do not know. I'm not a big rapper, so I'm not not against it. I do listen to some Christian rap. I have a friend, a guy I coach at East Prairie, who's a Christian artist. That Tony, did you know, Mr. Norman, who? Has some Christian rhapsodies I will listen to, but generally speaking, I listen to either gospel Christian music, contemporary Christian, or I listen to like '80s, '90s country uh, as far as music. But now I'm not a big rap guy. So fun fact: I actually produced one of Tony's videos. Wow, um, cool. But uh, it was he, he was up for a while and he took it down and put it back up as he was rebranding mm-hmm. recently. Uh, I do listen to rap mostly. It is rappers who love Jesus. Um, I would argue that some of their rap is actually better than a lot of what is currently out there. However, I do respect and and like the abilities of somebody like a Kendrick Lamar, uh, who I think is probably one of the better rappers currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, NBA Young Boy. He does rap about substantive things. Yes, uh, and that's I appreciate that. And and NBA Young Boy, I've heard some things from, and I have yet to hear anything truly substantive. I, I am probably the most in, embedded rap uh, aficionado, uh, but as an English teacher, I do like the wordplay that comes up to play. I look at rappers who have a larger repertoire of words they use. Like one of my favorites is this guy named Aesop Rock, uh, who uh, uh, who has uh, in his first five albums used over seventy thousand different unique words in his rapping in general. Uh, the same thing with like the Wu Tang Clan and everybody that's within there. They are very lyrically versed and they use a bunch of interesting words in order to get their point across. And I applaud that and I listen more to that than necessarily your standard. Just uh, even though I do love DMX, even though he only uses like a thousand <laughs> words in his first five albums. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I R.I.P. DMX. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing against rap music. It's just not my not I, my favorite. I really enjoyed that. Like as we went around the circle here, this was very much from our uh, like our content perspectives mm-hmm. as well. Like I'm like okay, substantive dealing with issues, very social studies. You're very focused on the language, and then you definitely got the like okay, you can play these things as hype music in a locker room kind of yeah, angle to right. it. That's that's interesting. All right, the question I have for you is, what is your favorite car, and what do you drive now? Well, I drive a Hyundai Accent that uh, gets really great gas mileage, which with driving from East Prairie is very helpful, but it's definitely not a, a glamour car. Uh, I think my favorite car is just a, uh, old, I love Trans Am, the old Trans Ams, Corvettes. I'm not, I've never been a big car guy, honestly, like, I don't know. So, um, go ahead. Oh, no, you, you had more to say about no, no, cars. No. I'm sure they'd love one to hear One of these days, it. I'm going to get a nice truck, though, when, whenever I maybe When retire. you don't have to drive I don't anymore. I have to drive <laughs> from East Prairie to Portageville every day. Let's get into the controversy, then, since you mentioned the truck. What do you define as a nice truck? Which which Are you a guy that goes, like, Ford or Ram? Or, like, is there a... I mean, I would lean more towards Chevy, but okay. but I, anything is would be, would be okay, because I've not, never had a really nice truck, so... Um, would you get Cybertruck? Cybertruck. That's the Tesla truck. The Tesla truck. No. Oh, it, yeah. lo- it looks like a, a, a it looks like a year old Druid. It looks like a, like a very angular computer mouse with really? wheels. But wow. it, <laughs> I'm gonna say even though my admin pay is good, that it's probably out of my price range. <laughs> I'm gonna guess. So. Um, so back to the actual questions from the box instead of my questions. Uh, this just says, Norman, can you cut off your sideburns? Um, <laughs> no, I did make a deal with the freshmen. I said if they won the dodgeball tournament, I would, and they did not come close. No. So You're take safe. the L. Um, so I got one. What is the funniest thing you have seen while teaching? Um, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> funniest thing. Let's see. It's funny after the fact, but when I was teaching at East Prairie, and this is not really me in the classroom, but the very first day of school, we used to always get all of our uh, high school student body in the gym, talk about some general rules, and then they would call the kids down by class to head to their class, first hour classes, and we had a student sitting in the very top row of the bleachers, first day of high school, great kid, and he trips and falls and rolls all the way down the bleacher, <laughs> pops up immediately, but he always got reminded of this incident, and I actually was ended up being the speaker for their senior graduation, and I remember bringing it up, and he, he was something he could never, he could never live down. Basically, he had fallen freshman year, first day of school. 
So that was kind of funny. But. That's, that's a solid, amusing memory. I have uh, <laughs> I have one that I, I think is, well, I'll, I'll say the question, then I, I'll refine it. It says, what is it like being a dog to you, D-A-W-G? There's two things that they could be referencing. One is the meme about, you know, he's, he's got a dog in him, right. if you've seen that recently. Uh, but the other that I, I'm curious about is also just like, you've been at different districts, you've seen a lot of different school mm-hmm. districts. What is it like being here at Portageville as compared to those other places? Yeah, that's the part I'll definitely be able to speak to what pretty well. I, Portageville, as I said earlier at the very beginning, it's a, it's a great district. I was at East Prairie. East Prairie was a good district too, but I went to Illinois for a year. That wasn't such a great district. This place has good people. We have a great school board. I feel like the teaching staff is dedicated. Uh, it's just a great place to be. We have good kids by and large. I mean, most of our kids are really good kids and don't cause issues for us. I just, I, I brag about Portersville, the community and the district to people all the time. I think it's fantastic. And that's why I was glad when the opportunity became an administrator came along here because I would preferably like to finish my career here and not have to go anywhere else. So that was a great part of this job coming open too. So uh, yeah, it's a great place to be. It's by far the best district I've been in. With that said, like uh, whenever we found out there was an opening, all of us were really wanting you to get this position. Yeah, I appreciate so. it. Thank you. And in fact, when we found out that one of the only other people that applied was Norman, the only we were other. Our, we were really scared. <laughs> <laughs> he would have done a great job. Great no, job. I uh, I did I did get into it thinking you know I applied because I had just finished my my uh, degree and everything, and I'm like. I'm going to apply, and there's going to be like 50 people applying for this job, so it'll be a cool way for me to learn the process. And in a few years, mm-hmm. you know, it, they'll know that I'm interested. And then I came in there, and, and Branson goes, you're one of two people who submitted an application. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. Yeah. And then I found out the other person. I, I didn't find out till afterwards, but they didn't tell me. But afterwards, when I found out you got it, I was like, oh, good, the other person was Irby. <laughs> oh. The other person was the one yeah. who wanted to. Um, yeah, so I was I was very thankful that you got the job. Oh, thank um, you. Say, my next question is, why are you so cool? I don't know that I really am cool. I think my daughter would tell you otherwise. I, I tell a lot of stupid dad jokes to her. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm cool. I just I enjoy kids. I lo- I've always loved that part of education, being around kids, high school kids especially. I don't know. I don't think I'm cool, though. We'll, we'll come back to your daughter in a minute. But uh, this one just says, Coach Penrod. He's coming on as our next guest, by the way. Uh, wow. So you're welcome for that. Whoever put that in, Penrod will be the next guest. I mean, I guess you could share your feelings on Coach Penrod if you. Well, want I don't to. know if many people know this, but I actually had Coach Penrod as a student when I taught at East Prairie. So I have. Some, I did not know that. I have some insight into his. Knowing, uh, younger not getting days. that year, getting that year that he first got to East Prairie, helped me pinpoint that he had. Yeah. Okay, so uh, do you got any? You have any good Penrod as a student stories? I mean, he's he's here. He's working now. It doesn't violate FERPA. We're all good. I'm sure Penrod. <laughs> He, uh, I had him in body conditioning, and uh, he was a hard, very hard worker. He liked to cut jokes and, and kind of rip on kids a little bit. So I remember having to get on him a few times about just taking care of his business and not being so goofy in the weight room. But once he, once I got, he was on task. He was a very focused student, but uh, and he's obviously turned out to be a great educator, great coach, great person. So. He's a real credit to our district as well. But and yeah. he's very focused in the weight room now. I can tell he you is. that our students will tell you he is very focused <laughs> is. in the weight room. He does a great job. All right, our next question is, can we get a Portageville High School team? <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> can we get a Portageville High School team? A Portageville High School team. Which I, we have a lot of them. Yeah. Guess, uh, I don't know, what team are we talking about? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've had some questions about can we get a golf team or a track team. So. Yeah, we have it. So we're doing our bill to law activity right now, and we have several things you'll get to see as I submit it to you guys as the executive branch. We've got several track and uh, actually men's volleyball, some other things that people are suggesting we get. I, I don't know we, which one that is. I remember when the golf team died, and if we can ever resurrect it, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you, <laughs> this ended up being the final question rather humorously, and I might be able to guess who wrote this question? Uh, it says, when can your daughter get a Snapchat? <laughs> well, I've kind of made a deal with her. I, if she has a good year this first year at the Portageville, academically does her best, uh, gives her best on the athletic courts and different things, that we might talk about it come spring. But I'm, uh, I don't know, again, social media being something I don't really like. I, I hear a lot of bad things that are found on Snapchat, but I've already had kids coming up to me and advocating on her behalf <laughs> to let her get Snapchat. So, Well, I assumed that it was her that actually wrote that. Probably. But 
I guess not. If other students are advocating for it, maybe it was it's one of well her known friends. That I don't let her have Snapchat. <laughs> but I, we didn't let Drew have Snapchat until he was like a sophomore. So we've kind of tried to stick to some of the similar timelines. But I'll probably end up breaking on it because she, she is a good kid. But uh, there's a lot of things on there I think are probably not so great. But. I mean, Drew didn't need to Snapchat when he had an Acer R11 Chromebook that was so easy to use. <laughs> he did. That's one of his finer moments, you know. <laughs> you're welcome, Drew. I know you're going to listen to this. That was for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so, so that's all the suggestions. It is. So on that note, do you have any final things you'd like to say? There's a lot of students that listen to this and uh, you know are, are very adamant about making sure their questions get asked. They were all asked. Do you have any final thoughts for the listeners of the podcast? I, I just would like to say, I guess, to our student body, thank you for being so good. This is obviously a new position for me, just about a quarter into the first year, but... Uh, Rarely do I have discipline problems in the high school. It's mostly middle school stuff, um, and they're not bad. It's just little things, but regardless, we have a great high school student body right now. I feel like our kids get involved. It was fun this week at homecoming seeing how many kids dressed up in the, for the different days. I just think, and there have, there's been years where that wasn't the case, so I just think we have a great student body. Just thanks for being who you are. Appreciate you guys a lot, and just go Bulldogs. All right, and so until next time, my name's been Paul Davidson. My name has been, and Lord willing, will be Scott Norman. And this has been Jason Irby, and you've been listening to Two Dumb Wise Guys. And an-